Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on Mjøstårnet in Norway, the world's tallest timber building. This is Rune Abrahamsen speaking and I'm not able to join you live, but I'm in my office in, in Muel in Norway and I hope you will enjoy listening to me. Let's start with this video. Well, uh, I'm representing Muelven, and Muelven is a, a large Scandinavian industry group uh, producing wooden products. And we have more than 3,500 employees, um, mainly in Norway and, and uh, Sweden. And we're one of the, the largest players uh, on the wooden, in the wooden sector in, in Scandinavia. The company that I run is called Muelven Limtre. Limtre is Norwegian for glue lam, glue laminated timber. Uh, and uh, we uh, have about 140 employees in, in our company. And we built the timber skeleton for the, the world's tallest timber building. Well, this actually starts with a is a small history. Uh, in 1994, Lillehammer in Norway hosted the Winter Olympics. And back then, the, the Norwegian authorities uh, wanted to, to use the Olympics uh, as a showcase for, for uh, local and uh, wooden products. And um, these very large arenas were built using timber structures back uh, in, in 1994. And at the time, these were really spectacular um, spans that were made. Um, for example, this ice skating um, arena, which uh, has a span of 96 meters, uh, is, is still impressive today. And the technology that was developed for, for these arenas is... The, um, and the joining technology that you see here, which is the same that we're still using today, uh, it's a technology where you, uh, which is which can handle very uh, high forces and uh, is based on slotted in steel plates with dowels. This technology uh, has since been used for, for many purposes uh, where you need to handle the uh, high forces. Uh, and uh, when it comes to buildings, we, we built our first building in 2005, uh, a five-story building in Trondheim, Norway's third largest uh, city. And then in 2015, we built a 14-story a building in Bergen on Norway's west coast which at the time was the world's tallest timber building. And uh, last year we, we completed the Mjøs Torne building at 18 stories, uh, only 15 kilometers from, from our factory. Well, the, the, the client uh, in, uh, for, for Mjøs Torne is the person you see on the, on the upper right here. His name is Arthur Bukart. Is a Norwegian property developer and investor, uh, a very creative person, and uh, he he called me back in 2015 and uh, asked me 
uh, for a meeting because he had an idea of a, a tall timber building and uh, he wanted to build the world's tallest timber building to be exact. This is actually his sketch from our first meeting where he uh, drew on a piece of paper his ideas on how, how this building was supposed to, to be, where there was uh, going to be a base and a, an office uh, at the bottom, then a hotel part in the middle and apartments at the very top. Um, as you can see, he, this, this were his numbers for how tall the building had to, had to be to be the world's tallest. Uh, but as you, as you know, we built it even higher than, than this. Well, that was in 2015. And in September 2018, the building was completed. And that included regulation, uh, design and construction which at least in, in our uh, standards is, is a very uh, speedy process. Um, and the official height ended up at 85.35 meters. In, in May last year, the Council on, on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat uh, officially uh, claimed that they or stated that this was indeed the world's tallest timber building. Um, it's a timber building by definition because all the vertical and horizontal load bearing is handled by timber structures only. It is not a hybrid. It, it is a per definition a, a timber building. And as far as we know, there is currently no building uh, which complies with this definition, uh, which is planned to be higher. But there are hybrid buildings that are, are, uh, are gonna be higher, which is good. So where is this? Well, we're in Scandinavia and we're in Norway and Norway's capital Oslo is here. And the location of the building is here some 140 kilometers north of Oslo, uh, a little more than one hour's drive north of the of Oslo airport. And on the right here, you see uh, where I'm at currently and where the factory, of the Glutam factory is, only 15 kilometers from the building site. There were a lot of companies involved in this uh, project. There was, uh, there was the client, obviously, who, uh, who hired the, the general contractor Hent, one of Norway's largest uh, contractors, um, and they were a turnkey contractor uh, for the client. Uh, and our role in this was to be a, a turnkey sub subcontractor for timber structures for uh, the, the, the contractor Hent. Well, uh, this is indeed a, uh, a sustainable uh, building and a, a project where sustainability is, has the highest uh, focus. And from the very beginning and, uh, and from when planning started, we, we wanted um, both the client and us to have a project where we used certified products, uh, where we wanted uh, to use local timber elements as far as we uh, as far as we could, and most of the timber elements are local, and we also wanted to use uh, competence which is uh, local. And the majority of the wood in this building comes from local forests and, and, and sawmills. So this, uh, this picture shows you what the building looks like. Um, uh, as a skeleton, uh, which is the part that we uh, were involved in yeah. and at the very bottom here there is a lobby and restaurant and uh, there are uh, uh, meeting rooms and some technical rooms on, on floor number two and on floors three to seven there are offices and on floors eight to eleven there is a hotel with 72 rooms 
On the upper part here, there are 33 apartments with magnificent views and uh, also a conference room uh, as a part of floor 17. And on the top floor, there is a penthouse apartment which belongs to the owner. Uh, and uh, just uh, the last month, there was a terrace opened on the top of that penthouse, which actually is floor number 19. Uh, but not official, not an official floor because nobody lives there. But you can access that that floor as a as a, um, a guest at the hotel. So the official height is eighty five point four meters. That's to the top of the architectural uh, part. This uh, beam here, but actually to the uh, to the tip of the building, which is a lightning rod. It's eighty eight point eight meters from from the basin and up there. Uh, we chose to, to use a timber system that we have developed in, in Muelven, which we called Tre Otte, which means wood eight. It's based in, it's developed in, in Sweden, and we have further developed this in, in Norway. Uh, it's a system where you're using uh, glue laminated timber as the main load bearing and you combine this with wooden cassette decks as shown here um, and uh, that's actually that's actually the system it's as, as simple as that and the bracing is handled by diagonals as as shown as shown here This is a typical floor of the building uh, where you see the two staircases. One of them is, is always closed because it's only for emergencies, but this one is uh, accessible. And there are three elevators, uh, of which one is a fire elevator. Uh, and here you can see the typical spacing, the, the distance between the axis of the main load bearings. So the structure is actually, it, it's quite simple. You can compare it with a, with a carton of, of milk where you don't have uh, plates on the side, but you actually have trusses. So these trusses that, that give the building the, its stability is made of, uh, of glue lamp columns and diagonals and, and beams. Uh, on all four sides, and, uh, and uh, they're, they're all around the perimeter of the building, so that makes the building uh, and, and the stiffness uh, quite, quite good. In addition, we have CLT incorporated as uh, walls for the, the, um, the elevators and for the staircases, but these are not a part of the main load bearing. They're only there to carry the the local loads of the elevators and the, and the staircases. And these uh, wooden slabs are all the way here up till uh, the top of the hotel floor. But on the upper part of the building, we have concrete slabs resting on the, on the timber, uh, timber beams. That's because our dynamic analysis showed that we needed more weight to make this a a, a building where people can feel comfortable in, in strong winds. So it, you actually needed more weight. And this skeleton is then, uh, uh, has, has um, wall elements on the outside, which also are, uh, are wooden. And those are, are uh, put on the outside of the, uh, the load bearing system. So this, Main load bearing will always be on the inside of the, of the climate shell and, um, and they, they will last for a very long time, well protected as they, as they are. Well, the, the structural design uh, was a big challenge, of course, uh, and we did not have the capacity in, 
in, in our uh, Gluram company to do this on our own. So we collaborated with Sveco and uh, the structural engineers uh, at Sveco. So they uh, calculated uh, the forces and also did the, the dynamic analysis um, for, for the building. So some of the uh, some of the notable uh, things about the structure is that when when there is a maximum wind at the top, the the building will shift about 14 centimeters in, in this direction, uh, and uh, which, which is not too much for a building of this height. And the the maximum compression force that we have in one of these four corner columns is 11,500 kilonewtons. So that's a, a very high uh, force. And also the tension force uh, is uh, considerable because this building will tend to, to, to overturn, of course, when the, the wind hits it. So there is some serious anchorage detailing here at the bottom of these uh, corners. Uh, the glue gun that we have uh, on the corner the columns is almost 1500 by 600 millimeters, so almost one square meter per running meter of, of, of column. So it's a huge piece of engineered wood. When it comes to dynamic design, that uh, is a, a major uh, concern for tall timber buildings because these buildings, they, they are stiff, they are strong, they are durable, but, but they are also very light. So you need to know uh, quite well how the building will behave so that people don't uh, get uneasy or, be, be, <coughs> or can feel uncomfortable. Uh, in the in the permanent situation and and during wind, so we actually used the the measurements and the the numbers that we got from the instrumentation of the building the, the fourteen story building in Bergen, which is more or less the same system at least for the main load bearing, uh, and used the damping ratio from that project uh, to to the Mjostorna building uh, and. Um, that is the decisive uh, parameter for the design of the of the main uh, load bearing and uh, so far uh, the, there has been no reports of people feeling seasick or nauseated uh, in Mjostorna, which is good and um, as for the dynamics there there uh, the building was uh, monitored during construction and is also monitored now uh, as it's in use. And these results will be published and, uh, and there is still research ongoing in a European project called the Dyna TTB, Dynamic Tall Timber Building Research Project. Well, uh, my friend Leif Tore will, will talk to you later about the fire protection uh, that was done in this building. Uh, I, I will just show you this to, to show you the principle where we, where we have a typical connection between a column and a beam and diagonal with these slotted in steel plates. Um, and we have some special strips, uh, intermescent fire strips, we call them, uh, that will expand uh, and uh, make sure that the, the heat and the, the fire cannot get to the steel because the steel is the vulnerable part in in these connections well i'm going to guide you through the installation quite quickly here we we started in in july 2017 uh, this is the um, anchor plate for one of these corner columns and where, where a bracing diagonal comes down so this this uh, plate is about two meters high approximately um, and uh, 
uh, many, many thousand kilonewtons has to be handled in, in this connection and, and anchored to the, to, the, to the ground. And for your information, there is no garage, there's no basement in this building, it's just a plate and these uh, foundations are connected to piles that are driven some 30 to 60 meters down to, to the bedrock. So on September the 4th in, in uh, 17, the first frame was uh, installed. So we, we made these giant ladders, as you see here, uh, on the ground from prefabricated pieces and installed them on the, uh, on the concrete. And on the same date, the next year, that was a coincidence, by the way, but uh, on the same date, the next year, the top beam of the building was installed. So this is um, a, a sketch or a, an image of how we did the different uh, installation steps. We, as, as mentioned, we started in September 17, and in about two weeks, we built the first four stories. Uh, then we continued uh, uh, with, the, with the next four and we built the building four or four to five stories at a time because then we can get individual, individually stabilizing stabilized uh, parts that, are, uh, that don't need so much uh, bracing during installation. So it's a rational way for us to, to go up high and, and also to build uh, in a quick manner. So we did like this, and uh, from September to March, we were up uh, in to, to, the, to the top floor. So this was a, this is from the first step in September. And here you can see the, 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 the tre of the load bearing system where the, and the, the wooden cassettes being lifted into the into the structural system. And when we were finished with the eighth floor, we paused for a while and waited for the facade contractor to install wooden uh, wall elements on the outside of the of the structure. So we waited and the facade contractor went up to about here and then we proceeded. In, in this manner we could um, uh, we could protect the building as we went up and also do some work inside as we were installing uh, structures further further up. So this was a building from a, a picture from the from March in, in 2018 where we reached the 18th floor. And in July that summer, we when the building was more or less finished, we installed the uh, the balconies, which actually are CLT cross laminated timber balconies prefabricated that they are that are connected to the outside of the apartments. And then the, the upper part, the per, pergola, pergola, was uh, installed uh, uh, in, in September. And uh, we did make a picture or an image like this just to to make a resemblance of the Empire State Building, just, just for the, the fun of it. I'm, I'm sure most of you know this building. We have a safe distance to ground here, I must admit, but kind of cool. Well, I'm going to show you a video from the installation. Here it comes.
Well, the assembly was uh, spectacular in its own way because this is all about uh, uh, doing a, a Lego assembly with, uh, with very large pieces. Everything is prefabricated uh, and uh, uh, we assemble in uh, a truss parts that are quite big at the ground here and hoist them in and, and position them as we, as we went up. And we did this without using any external scaffolding. We only used the tower crane and uh, some additional mobile crane when we needed one. Uh, and, uh, and lifts that were lifted onto the decks and to, to help us uh, access uh, fixing points and connection points. Now here you can see these lifts that are on, on, the, on the decks. Typical dimension for a inner column here would be about 600 by 800 millimeters. And uh, well, they, they, they're massive. When it comes to the facade, uh, there was a, an external scaffolding in the form of a, a mast climber that was used, but that was for the uh, connection of the uh, uh, floor to floor on the facade elements where they have to access from the outside to, to make the ceiling right. The ceiling between the elements. Previously, uh, when we did assembly uh, of, uh, of large structures, we pre-assembled truss, trusses in one of our uh, holes, like, like shown here. Uh, to make sure that every piece fits perfectly before we disassemble the, the whole structure and move it to the construction site. So this was the procedure that was done for the 14-story building in, in Bergen. And that works, but it's quite costly. Uh, and for the uh, Mjöstorne project, we, we tried out for the first time a new new way of production where we uh, to a much higher degree rely on the exactness of our machinery our robots uh, and uh, uh, we we made each part in the in the factory with all the uh, processing and the and the, the steel plates inserted and so forth and did the the, the installation on site live you could say and that actually worked quite well uh, and saved us for a, lot, uh, for a lot of time and also uh, money, obviously. And by doing it like this, we, we had one part, one diagonal, had some errors in it from the production uh, and, and uh, we had to, to uh, to make a new piece for for that one diagonal, but apart from that, all the other several hundreds parts were were uh, a perfect match. So we believe this strategy works quite well for for our production. And also, something which is quite cool when it comes to timber structures is that the exactness is is uh, very very high. And when, as, as we went to the very top of the building, we had a maximum deviation out of the theoretical plane of 19 millimeters. Uh, and 19 millimeters is, well, let's say a small thumb and um, that's 85 meters up in the air. So that, that's quite impressive. And um, it, it's very hard, uh, I can imagine, to, to, to do the same uh, exactness in, in steel or concrete. Well, this, this image shows one of these prefabricated wall elements. Uh, they're huge, 50, 60 square meters each. Uh, they were also produced locally, just a few hundred meters from the, uh, fr from the building site. They're ready with insulation. Uh, and uh, and paneling on the outside and the sunscreening automatic sunscreening for the windows 
this is all included in the element. So you just need to do internal finishing after the, the element is, is uh, installed, as well as the, the ceiling and some fire stop devices that you need to add on, on every, every floor. The, the wooden panels on the outside here are uh, made of, of pine wood and they are fire impregnated and also thermally treated for, for long durability. When it comes to building uh, outside, well, Norway has uh, four seasons. We have wet and dry and hot and cold weather, uh, but we still choose um, to build our structures out in the open uh, and we also chose to do that for this project uh, and that doesn't really worry us uh, too much uh, we need to take uh, care of the end grain make sure that the uh, end grain is not exposed over a long time but apart from that the, the glue lamb and the structures can handle the the water and the moisture changes quite well There is a, a, an old steamboat uh, on the lake outside of the, uh, of the building. So this, uh, build, uh, this picture is taken from the steamboat. Um, it's one of the world's oldest, by the way. And the name Mjös Torna actually means the tower of Lake Mjösa. Uh, Mjösa is Norway's largest lake. And uh, here you can see the tower of Lake Mjösa. Well, here you can see a typical connection uh, inside Mjös Torna. Uh, some some uh, quite, uh, how can I say this? Uh, well, quite hefty and, and, uh, and large connections to handle these uh, very high uh, compression and tension forces. And some cracks can be seen as well. This is a drying crack, uh, not um, uh, dangerous for the structural behavior as such. It's just for the uh, a, a surface crack. But that was one thing that I promised the client from the very beginning that if we're going to build this for you, I can promise you that there will be some cracks visible because that's part of the nature of wood at least when you have dimensions of, of this size. But uh, he, that was no problem for him. He, he said, that's, I know it's like that. And as long as they're not uh, hazardous, you can, uh, you can proceed with your planning and your construction. This is from the, from the ground floor. And uh, there is a really cool spiraling uh, staircase uh, joining the, the two first floors, as you can see here. And this is inside one of the 72 hotel rooms. The hotel is open. Um, right now there is a corona crisis, so the hotel has been closed for some months, but uh, it will open in the, in, in the middle of June. So you will be able to go there whenever you, you like, and it's affordable. This is inside one of the apartments at the top of the building. I think this is on, the, the, on floor 17, and the view here is just awesome. We have had more than 2,000 visitors from, from every continent of the world visiting the construction. Uh, during the uh, during the uh, the buildings uh, during the construction time, this is actually the the, the head people from uh, Moherd, uh, which is the the Chinese uh, building authorities. They they have been here several times to to look at this and. This is the hotel manager, Kari, at the top of the, the terrace on top of the penthouse. Uh, so this is uh, floor 19, you could say, which is accessible for, for hotel guests. 
Well, um, we didn't build this only to break a record. Um, we did it because we believe uh, using wood is good for for the construction industry and for the climate. So we're quite fine with uh, other people and other countries and other projects uh, uh, grabbing this world record. No stress. Go ahead. Uh, we've had a lot of fun and a lot of interest in, in doing it with, with our project. And I'm going to share some of the experiences and thoughts we have on Tall Timber. Uh, well, this, this project really proves that glue laminated timber is well suited uh, for high rise buildings. You can handle those really high forces well. Uh, and you can also cope with the fire requirements. And for uh, when it comes to maintenance, uh, we believe that uh, uh, keeping the, the, the main structures internal and not exposing them to the, to the weather uh, makes, uh, well, that is sound and uh, makes the structure more durable. That's what we have done at Mjöstora. When it comes to the cost of the structure, uh, we believe it's cost competitive. Um, the, the, client, uh, uh, the client's contractor, Hent, told us that the, 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 they could save about 15, 20% on the structural skeleton using prefabricated concrete instead of, of wood. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm convinced that the difference is not that big. Uh, because they use that uh, just to, to pre pre put pressure on us to, uh, to uh, cost, cost price because this was going to be a, a, a wooden building anyway. Uh, but um, what I can share with you is that the total cost of the building, according to Hent, is about 2 to 3% higher uh, with. Uh, uh, a timber solution and a standard concrete prefabricated uh, structure, um, which means that um, uh, which the client says, says that is, is quite okay because uh, the attention uh, and the, the willingness of the local authorities to actually give the building permit uh, more than outweighs that uh, that extra cost. And also keep in mind that this is a, a pilot project. So doing this the next times would make it more, even more cost competitive, I would say. And when you compare costs, um, the, the, uh, the time of installation is also all, uh, many times not considered. And uh, in reality, a quick installation like this saves time, uh, obviously, and also money. So Hent estimates that the, there was about three months saving uh, doing it uh, as a timber structure compared to a, a concrete uh, a building. Well, you all know this, uh, using wood to an extent like this considerably uh, lowers the, the footprint when it comes to carbon dioxide. Uh, we also believe that uh, we, you should not use more materials than you actually need and using a truss system like this really optimizes the materials. Um, and also we, we knew and also experienced now that people in this building, they really like to work there and live there. They're very happy and satisfied with the building. Um, and in well, when we say that when you when you optimize materials and combine wood, steel, and concrete, you you end up with with climate smart buildings, and those are buildings that our grandchildren want want to live in. So we're we're not timber fanatics. Uh, we believe timber can solve many uh, many challenges, but we're. we're it could be that our next project in tall timber is a hybrid. You never know. We're open to most uh, most solutions and most suggestions, but they need to be uh, sustainable and, and climate smart. Well, thank you all for, for listening. Uh, you are, of course, most welcome to come to Norway and, and experience the building yourself. You will not uh, regret such a such a trip to Norway, uh, so 
be welcome here and uh, you can also book the accommodation at the Wood Hotel if you if you would like to, to stay overnight in the world's tallest timber building. So thank you.